Today's lecture will be over chapter 2, section 4. Objectives, number 1, describe mechanical and chemical weathering. Number 2, relate the process of water, wind, glacier, erosion to the development of landforms. And number three, identify the basic components of soil. So today what we're going to be talking is we're going to be talking about how the forces of the earth kind of start to shape the earth. And um, what we have to look at is we have to look and we have to see um, rocks, we have to see sediment, we have to see how this all kind of fits in and why certain places are why they look like. So the first thing we look at is weathering and this is a process that alter rock on or near the earth's surface. Uh, it can change landscape over time, create soil for plant life. So what we see is, is that this weathering is going to change. These are things like erosion. Um, they're going to change rocks formation. They're going to change mountains. They're going to change different types of soil because all these things are happening. Sediment is muds, mud, sand, silt created by the weathering process and so this sediment is going to be created by basically the erosion and the weathering that happens. Now there's two different types of weathering. Make sure that you can decipher between these two right here. It's mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. Mechanical weathering for a good definition is a process of break rock into smaller pieces. Does not exchange does not change a rock's composition only size. So make sure that you know mechanical weathering is going to go ahead and it's going to break down rock, but it's going to just break it down. It's just going to create it's going to be the same thing Thing, but it's just going to become smaller. Now, chemical weathering then is the interaction of elements that create a new substance. An example, when iron rusts and reacts with oxygen and air and crumbles, you're going to go ahead and see iron. So, what we see with chemical weathering is that it is changing the composition. So again, uh, mechanical weathering, you're going to see it becomes just, it's the same object, it's just smaller. Chemical weathering is going to completely change what it is. Now, we also see erosion, okay, and this is going to be when weather material moves. Um, erosion is when weather material moves by wind, water, ice, and gravity. Movement grinds rocks into smaller pieces, carries them to new location. There's a lot of examples here, but again, you can go ahead and see erosion. You can see things like wind beating up against the rocks. You can see the wind picking up the sand and throwing it against the rocks. You can see water continually pounding away on the rocks. So all of these things can be Erosion. Now, water erosion, most streams erode vertically and horizontally. A valley can be cut by a stream, gets deeper, wider, and forms a V-shaped alley. A river deposits sediment and, at the ocean and it creates a delta, which is going to be a fan-like uh, landform. We're going to show you pictures here a little while of what these are. You can also see wind kind of doing the erosion as well. Wind transports sediment from one place to the other. So again, it can pick things up and it can throw it all over. A loss is wind-blown silt and clay sediment that produces fertile soil. We also see glacier erosion and glacier is a large long-lasting mass of ice that forms in mountainous areas. When we think of glaciers we think of these beautiful white things but in glaciation it's going to be changing of landforms by slowly moving glaciers. So what we see is, is that they're going to pick up mud, they're going to pick up dirt, they're going to pick up sediment on the ground and what we see is that they're going to pick them up and send them someplace else so some of these glaciers can be very very dirty a moraine is a hill or ridge formed by rocks that are deposited by this glacier so what it is is just picking up a bunch of um, soot and ground and uh, all of this and just setting it somewhere else now we also see that soil, the soil formation, we can go ahead and look at this and see how things grow. Soil is a loose mix of whether rock, organic material, air, and water. It's going, to, it's going to support plant life and fertility depends on three things. Texture, the amount of hummus, which is organic material in the soil, and then the amount of air and water. Now you might sit here and think, well, this is some really boring stuff here, but this is essential right here. Because if you go out in your backyard and you start digging into your dirt, you might find that there is really some clay type of soil. You might see that it's not very good. It's got sand in it. That's not going to grow very good. Now we are able to go ahead and get the things that we need, our basic necessities in life. We're able to get those from the supermarket or wherever the place may be. 
but other people in the world can only live where the soil is good because they have to grow things and they have to grow things for their life. So if they go and they go into an area that's got a bunch of clay, they're not going to be able to live there. So what we see with soil formation and soil factors is that it's very important that you have good soil. Uh, if you don't know Nebraska for a long time, people didn't think that the soil was very good. Um, and really the American Midwest, people thought that it was a bad place to be. And then they figured out what could grow there. And of course, you know that um, the two big crops that we grow in Nebraska are going to be corn and soybeans. And so that's good stuff that can grow. Now, soil factors. When we, study, when we uh, study the soil, we look at five factors. Number one, parent material. And this is going to be the chemical composition of the original rock. So what we see is, is that, is it able to basically grow good things? We also look at relief. The steeper the slope, the greater the erosion, less soil is made. So if we have got the plains, that's going to hold a lot of the things that we need for things to grow. Mountainous areas, lot more difficult. We also look at organisms. These are going to be plants, worms, ants, bacteria. What they do is they loosen up the soil. If any of your parents or guardians or even yourself, if you're somebody that likes to um, grow things in your backyard and do some gardening, you see worms, you actually like them because what they do is they dig through the dirt and what happens is they create little tunnels. And what happens then is that when it gets water, the water gets into that soil and also you're going to see air getting into there. So those organisms are very important. Also climate, you're going to see in the hot, cold, wet, dry climates produce different soils. For example, in the, in the, or in the United States, in the south, you're going to see things like cotton, tobacco. In Florida, you're going to see oranges. In Nebraska, we don't grow those things because of our climate. So we're going to have to go ahead and we're going to have to grow things like corn and soybeans. And then the last thing is time. About 2.5 cubic centimeters of, so, of soils produce each century, which basically allows it to grow. This is our, this is a completion of chapter two, section four. Please complete the assessments at this time.